So you know how everyone is going on and on about these Ganzo Firebird knives, you know, myself included, and claiming that these are just currently the best value in the knife market. Well, guess what? Today's knife, I think, might just change all that. Hey, how you doing? My name is Jay. Uh, welcome to my channel. And if this is your first time here, consider clicking on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. Right now, you should be looking at some specs. Now, these are measurements that I'd personally taken myself, but don't worry, I'll also list them down in the description below, just in case if there's any of you that want to follow along throughout this review. This is the GeoKnife GEO901. Yeah, that's that's the name. And GeoKnife is an OEM company that is also, they're starting to manufacture their very own like in-house designs. I will put in a link down in the description to their company website and also to the Amazon listing where I purchased this. Let's take care of those size comparisons. First knife is going to be from Spyderco and the PM2. And how about that Ganzo Firebird, the uh, FH41. Sticking with the budget, here is the Civivi Backlash. And lastly, the Bug Out from Benchmade. Starting with the blade, which is just a good looking drop point. In, uh, it's in D2 steel that is uh, satin finished with a flat grind. And you can see up at the top here, it's got a little bit of a swedge going on, uh, very similar to the, uh, to the Bug Out here. And now check out how well how well done this sharpening choil is. Look at that, where that grind just kind of terminates. Very well done. Using just that, that flipper tab, the action here is, well, it, it's very good. I mean, it's not like, oh my God, that's so good, but it's good. The detent, it is now, it, it is strong enough to the point where you can see while it's upside down, it, it, I'm unable to, uh, to to shake it loose, but I can fail the deployment pretty easy, pretty much whenever I want. And the closing action, now the closing action is also, it's, it's really good. And it is, I've even noticed it like getting better, like these, these past couple days, because on the inside, this blade's riding on, yeah, get this, ceramic ball bearing pivot. Yeah. Oh. Wait till you guys hear this price. So you can you can do that thumbnail closure for those of you, you know, it just re does require a little bit of shake and bake, not much. I honestly, it. I'm pretty sure that this thing will be uh, drop and shut before too long. The fit and finish of the 901 is also very good because I held this up to the light and there are no, there's no gaps anywhere like between the liners and the backspacer. And once deployed now, that, uh, that, that liner is locking up. Uh, let's call that at about 20%. And now the centering out of the box, it was perfect. Honest, it was. But of course, I had to jack with it and now it's a little bit off. So I have to, uh, I gotta play with it to get it back uh, centered. But it did arrive centered. Now in the hand, I wear a medium sized glove and you can see I can fit all of my fingers on this four and a half inch long handle that is made from G10. The grip is very, very comfortable and because there's, there's no sharp edges anywhere on the handle. And speaking of that G10, it really does, see if you can hear that. Yep, it provides just some excellent traction. Now, unfortunately, the jimping is not so hot. And just by looking at it, you can see it is very, very shallow. Yeah, it's 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 pretty darn useless. But there is so there's useless jimping on the uh, spine of the blade on the flipper tab. And I don't know if you want to consider the stuff here on the backspacer jimping. I am not a fan of this of this pocket clip it it's you can see it is not deep carry i mean it's not too bad but it's definitely not not deep carry and so it's just going to be tip up only 
for righties. Yeah, no lefty love, what the heck. But to be fair, at least so the attachment point where it's attached to the scale, that has been recessed, so a uh, small consolation. Now I got out the uh, cutting board, and why don't we go ahead and see how well this four millimeter thick blade, yep, let's see how it cuts. Whoa. Dang, did you see that? That cuts very well. Before I go ahead and toss this up on the scale, I just want to show you that it is, it's for the most part, it's going to be closed construction with that big uh, G10 backspacer. And if we look at the, I want to see if you'll be able to see this on the inside. Uh, right there, hopefully. Yeah, right there. So you can see the one liner. It has in fact been uh, skeletonized in an effort to reduce the weight. Let's see how they did. Hmm. Okay. 4.4 ounces. Now keep in mind, this is a 3.3 uh, inch long blade. So 4.4 ounces. That's going to be roughly the equivalent. One, two, three, four, five. It looks like five AA batteries. Or... Oh, just a little bit heavier than the Civivi Backlash. And as long as I have it out, I have previously reviewed the Backlash. So if at the end of the video, uh, if you're interested, go ahead and click up. Yep, right up there in the corner on that icon, and it will take you to my full review. And before we get to my potential uh, deal breakers, I, I do have a question for you. All I would like to know is just what is like one of your all-time favorite knives that are relatively unknown. Just, you know, one that wasn't really popular, just kind of obscure. Leave your answers down in the comment section below. Now, some of these potential deal breakers, they are also things that I personally do not like about this knife. So starting out with uh, number one is gonna be the handle thickness. 0.57 inches. And I realized for some you know what, that might be just a bit much. Second potential deal breaker is, you guys could probably guess this one, the pocket clip. Yeah, just the one position, no, nothing for lefties going on here. That kind of stinks. And the third potential deal breaker is regarding this jimping. And I know for some of you, the jimping really isn't a big deal, but for others, you know, it, it, it can be. And this jimping is just, it's, it's terrible. I mean, it might as well not be there, honestly. And the last potential deal breaker, this thing is a fingerprint magnet. It really, I mean, if you're looking for a knife with a mirror polish on it, yeah, this would be it. But those of you that don't like that, um, well, you're not gonna like this finish. So now where does that leave us with the uh, Geo 901? Well, this knife, it, it comes from a company, uh, you know, Geo knife that we just, we don't know, at least I don't know a lot about. So of course that, that could raise the question, you know, is, is this blade, is it really D2 steel? Because I don't know if you remember some of the, uh, uh, those Fura gear knives you know, were claiming to be D2, and they in fact were not. Now, I'm not saying that this is not D2, but it does make you wonder. I mean, especially considering how much that you're getting for only, get this, $20. Yeah, $20 on Amazon. And you're getting G10 scales, a four millimeter thick chunk of D2 and a ceramic ball bearing pivot for twenty dollars. I really, I really hope that this is not uh, too good to be true, because I really like this design. If you go to Geo Knives' w website, you'll see they have all of two knives on their site. This one and another knife. Uh, what is that one called? The 902. So if if this, in fact, is Geonife's very first 
in-house design. Oh man, I cannot wait to see what they do next. So if you enjoyed this video and you got any value from it, maybe just leave, I don't know, a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.